This week in moto from around the world, the next Supercross race that is on the schedule is November 3rd for the Australian Supercross round three. Hey, I would love to get this video to at least 500 likes. Do me a favor, hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button. There is some massive rumors going around. I've heard lots of different things when it comes to Suzuki folding and... Also, Ken Roxon going over to Europe to race. Well, there is more confirmation that allegedly there may be some more news when it comes to Roxon racing for Ducati. And I would freaking love that in 2026. What would he do? There's also rumors that Ducati won't actually have a racing team here in America until motocross. So that kind of leaves Ken Roxon up in the air for 2026 Supercross. What would he do? Would he race the MXGPs for Ducati and then continue over here in America? I don't know. It just leads to some speculation for sure. But vital. This is what they also had to say about it. Expected to be just a one-year extension. There's still a lot of rumors floating around about Kenny potentially being Ducati's main U.S. rider in 26. So we'll keep an eye out for that throughout. Main U.S. rider. How freaking cool would that be? I know I wanted Tomek to be the Ducati guy, but hey, if it's Roxon, let's freaking do it. The Roxonator. That's, I guess, the new nickname that I just came up with on the fly. There's also some other news when it comes to Kawasaki. Speculation about them potentially losing their Monster Energy sponsorship. Now, I will say this has been a... Yes, this is just more rumors. However, ah, I've also heard some crazy accusations, you know, allegedly when it comes to the Deegans taking the monster. And is that going to go to Ducati potentially? Could you see a Ducati team for 2026 that is monster energy? I 100% can. Like, they can't freaking do the progressive thing where they have got the stickers on every single motorcycle i know monster energy is big but i don't believe they make as much of an income as an insurance company that you know not everyone's forced to buy a monster but everyone is forced to have insurance on their vehicle yeah you could say younger kids don't need insurance but anyway i'm, I'm getting into the weeds on that there's been some rumors that the Deegans might start their own team or i would honestly like to see it better with the ducati Little Deegan on the Ducati for the 250, but at 2026, he might be moving up to 450s. He might just have one more year of racing. That would be the last year. And then Ken Roxon could race the final year on Ducati and then give the reins to Hayden. That would be awesome for Monster Energy Ducati. However, back to those rumors that they might just make their own team, but I I'm just throwing it out there that Ducati would be would be a better choice for sure. And also, when it comes to these guys shuffling around, when you have Star Yamaha, which is actually getting paid by Yamaha, they're the ones doing everything. Star is actually just controlling and holding onto the contracts and being the middleman, I guess, is what Vital has to say here, which was a great video. So definitely go check that out. But in overall, what I wanted to hear from him with the 450 class was that Webb is on his last year and he's got one more potential year. He's going to switch brands from Thor to Fly. Personally, I think the Fly gear looks better than the Thor stuff, so that'll be cool to see. Eli, it's his last year. Is he going to race more? I don't know. I still am hoping that the Ducati thing happens, but it looks like it might more be likely that Kenny gets on it. Then you have Justin Cooper, where he's on his last deal with star yamaha which again that kind of leaves hayden to move up to the 250 class with potentially a couple guys going away but i would honestly see webb signing an extension because tomac is going to leave he was probably supposed to leave in 2024 but now he's back for 2025 so those two titans are probably clashing because you know there's only so many resources and some budgets have to come into play so for that reason, that's why Sexton had to get away from Honda. And the Honda boys, Jet and Hunter, are going to sign an extended deal with them. So we'll be seeing them on for the next three, four years, which makes sense. You know, Honda, I asked their team manager, hey, what's it going to take to keep these guys on Honda? And they said just more money. So I'm assuming that's exactly what they're getting is more money. It'd be cool if that stuff becomes 
Republic. And speaking of Sexton, he's on his last deal with KTM with an option for one more year. Do we see him on KTM? I don't know. Roger DeCoster does an amazing job. However, I don't think he's happy with the equipment. I could see him moving also to potentially Ducati in 2026, but not if they don't have a Supercross deal. That would leave it up to, could he move to Star Yamaha or could he move to Kawasaki that might not have the Monster Energy sponsor anymore. So there's lots going on there. And Gas Gas has now released photos of what they're going to look like with Rockstar Energy Gas Gas because, you know, there's no longer the factory Gas Gas Troy Lee Designs team. So they are emerging, and this bike is going to be ridden by Barsha, and Barsha is also on his last year. So that's going to be interesting as well because he might end up going over to Europe as well or just flat out retire, which would be a bummer. However, man, the sport just seems to be getting more and more gnarly as the years go by because of innovation with the motorcycles and also with the talent. And Dunlop also released a new factory spec tire. So finally, we've got some new tires set out where a bunch of these guys were testing over there in Alabama. I don't know exactly what they think of these, but, you know, soft terrain. So this is a very hard-packed tire. So I'm just going to cut through everything. Uh, be interesting to see if they get rid of that paddle tire because that paddle tire, you know me, I somewhat think that it is freaking a cheater tire. So it'd be nice to see some different tires come into play where riders can pick multiple stuff rather than just, hey, let's go with the paddle tire. Hey, it's muddy. Go with the paddle tire. Hey, it's dry and hard pack. Go with the paddle tire. <laughs> you know, uh, Very, very, very interesting. With other news, with Hacker, with the Enduro stuff, he won basically all the motos from one, two, and three where they do a reverse, and he ended up taking out Hart at the finish line, and they had some words, but Colton has been the faster of the three guys, and yeah, was it a complete takeout? He goes from the far left to the outside, and he does take the line away, but this is the finish line, and you would think Tristan would probably just check up, know that, hey, you're not going to beat the guy. You're already two bike lengths behind him, or at least one bike length behind him for the finish line. Why, why even push the envelope, you know, but... Hey, it's pretty interesting that these guys are doing the arena cross type deal where you have the reverse of the start. Whatever you do, race one is how you finish. Now you're going to reverse, but Hacker was still able to <laughs> come to the pack and win. And yeah, he crossed the finish line with two tenths of a second lead. He still had a lead. So I'm probably going to say that this was Hart's fault because, hey, when they're guy in front of you you should just check up and we had the other races going on at Ironman with the GNCC these three hour long races Marvin was coming out of retirement to race and I, it was so hard to find the results to this guy because it was just darn near impossible to have the website actually work. I kept getting some errors. But Craig DeLong ended up winning it commandingly. And you had Villapoto finish ninth overall. And Nicoletti, he got fourth in the actual pro class. And then second in the 25 plus class. And I believe our boy... Jeff Walker actually beat Villapoto and Marvin. Marvin ended up having some issues and couldn't finish the actual moto. So he ended up sitting on the sidelines, you know, with a, a DNF. But cool to see him back because we know that that dude freaking knows how to ride a motorcycle, no matter if it's a two-stroke, four-stroke, electric bike, you name it. And World Supercross, their next race is going to be at the end of November. But yeah, their format, they actually do basically like four main events, which is cool, where they do the Super Pole. Then you have the three races of the main events that are eight laps, eight laps, and 12 laps. And then they take the top eight in both classes and then do an open class. I really like that format. I just wish that there was 
a more depth of field, especially in the 250 class. And this last weekend with Ken Roxon trying to shut off Eli Tomac really didn't happen because this SOB just showed a clinic on how to ride a motorcycle. Look at him just da 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 da. Let's just wheelie through freaking 12 sets of whoops and yeah he doesn't have that front wheel way high it's very very incredibly fast right amazing and we got some new motorcycles coming out here you have the triumph which i've talked about in previous episodes with their new ricky carmichael edition they won't have a full team until 2026 you've got this new beta which is cool but i would say that this guy is right up there with the the gas gas and part of the reason why they haven't been doing as well on the motocross and supercross aspect not the enduro part is they just don't have the depth of talent to afford to get them on the motorcycle i do think it's a, a pretty decent motorcycle i've only ridden a few laps on one but it was it was it was good it was good and then gas gas is updating their mini and now it's a new frame and it is new water cooled to keep it cool this is exactly where the industry is going if you're growing up on one of these things you're going to race one of these things as an adult that's just how the progression works as much as people hate having e-bikes they're here to stay yeah there's lots of issues with them right now because of battery life and noise whatever because we're egotistical guys that don't want to hear ee, 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 ee. but if you still have really good racing you're going to have really good racing that yes there could be some dangers involved with that but just as far as innovation goes is with new technology, that's what happens. That's what happened to the four strokes. Everybody hated those suckers when they came out. Like, my knee still hurts from kicking a YZ400. And, you know, my soul still hurts from having to push that sucker across the parking lot to try to get that SOB to start. But eventually, you did. And finally, we have Manny with the Hard Enduro World Championship. He is now the newly crowned champion. And Billy Bolt there at... what? Well, what round was this again? This was round seven. He's had a difficult series, but he said this with a win at round seven was Saturday went perfect, but Sunday was what it was really all about. I've lost out at this race in the past, so I knew how important the opening laps are here, and I knew I had to stay in the fight in the early laps. I got tired in the middle of the race, but then when the track started to clear out, I found my pace. And again, and rode for the win. Yeah, that's got to be crazy with coming through lappers because there's so many guys on the track with these things. And I, I don't want to ever ride one of these because the amount of just damage I would do to my soul and my dirt bike would just be astronomical. And give it up to how incredibly talented these guys are. The real one, cool ones are to see is when they're inside the towns and they're doing little sprint races there. I really find those highly enjoyable because they're like the Red Bull straight rhythms, but with Enduros, ew, scary. But you have to have a, a very specialized bike. And also, these guys spend thousands of hours in the woods and doing these things. So you take a super cross rider and you try to put them on here. They're not going to beat these guys. Plain and simple. They're not going to beat these guys. And if you take these guys and put them on a super cross track, they won't beat the super cross guys either. And that It's a weird analogy. It's a very di different discipline for all this stuff. And that's truthfully what I think about motocross to supercross is they're almost as different as hard enduro is to supercross. Like they're just completely different demographics of racing and therefore i really think that putting them together i guess it's kind of a hybrid series but it should be more of one race supercross fifth races motocross 10th races motocross all the way up to the super motocross finals where guys have to be pretty good at both disciplines there because back to the whole eli thing we might actually see eli do a supercross only deal with could it be Ducati? I know I keep throwing that out there, but probably not. But he might just do a Supercross only again with Star Yamaha in 2026. Let's just let's just run that guy into the ground. Keep having him race. Just keep throwing money at him until that happens. Well, that is this week in Moto News from around the world in less than 15 minutes. Appreciate every single one of you. Till next time, keep it WFO. Ba -ra -da 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 -da.